two of the biggest names in cooking spend a Saturday fishing together. Marco Pierre White is in pole position on the weir. His friend Gordon Ramsay is some way behind. That was a good start, was it? I've only been here two minutes, I've caught something already. My thumb. Competition between them is fierce, and not just for fish. Marco is the only British chef with three Michelin stars, the trade's ultimate accolade. Ramsay has two and is snapping at his heels. Gordon's first taste of Michelin-starred cuisine came as an apprentice in Marco's kitchen. Today at 32, winning three stars has become an obsession for Ramsay. And to get the edge, he wants to be the youngest chef to hold the award. <laughs> I told you four and a half minutes. Get me the next one. Keep yep. going. Don't bother extending it, it doesn't need it. He's a nice one. About 10 pounds, though. No? I caught that one last week with you. Gordon is one of the most competitive people I've ever met in my life. Whatever he does must be a competition. Gordon wants to catch more fish than Marco. Gordon wants to catch a bigger fish than Marco. And vice versa. <laughs> How you doing, big boy? I think my, I think my, I think my, I think my bait's dead. Hey, I think my bait's hey, dead. It's all right. Just don't leave it, let, let it work. Let it work itself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going too far out. Just keep close in. Even today, Gordon still has to accept the role of apprentice. I've been here eight minutes, I'm two nil down. To keep that competitive edge, I think, is important. Yeah, you know, I was very touched that Marco got to the very top and won three Michelin stars. But now I'm running a very close race and I'm tucked in behind him and I'd really like to get to the top, to the very top. Bait. Give me your bait, give me your bait and get the net. Look at me! Know what you see? I feel like a f***ing net boy. See a bad mother. Paid the car to beat the balls. Shit, 3-0. Paid the car to beat the balls. Shit, right in my ass. Look at me! My feet are soaking. A situation one of Gordon's junior chefs might enjoy. The boss 3-0 down, wet feet, and now no rod. What a dickhead. <laughs> Game set and match to Marco. Shit. It's Ramsay's dream of three Michelin stars that drove him to set up his own restaurant. And the guide's inspectors are starting to take note. Last night I had a Michelin inspection uh, from uh, the number one inspector from France and uh, the one and only Mr. Bulmer, the number one uh, in Britain. So what does it tend to indicate? Well, it looks like we're maintaining our two stars. I mean, I don't really want to speculate any more than that. But, I mean, I... Or could it be three? As is customary, the Michelin visit was unannounced. Yeah, we'll have two more, three more inspections, but uh, we may not even know. They could be in for lunch today. They could be in for dinner tonight. We'll never know. Ramsay realises he could now be in line for his third star, but getting there takes innovation and experiment. In the early hours, when the rest of his staff have gone home, Gordon's kitchen becomes his laboratory. Tonight, he sets about creating a dish with a difference. John Dorian roasted scallops, but with a hint of curry powder. So where do you get the ideas for new dishes from? Um, eating out. Off to France, off to Italy. Um, you know, it's important to, to read, look through menus, quite inspirational. Uh, sometimes when I'm on my own, three, four o'clock in the morning, it's, you know, it's concentration and bang, something will come, something will click and you'll go to bed with that thought. You'll wake up the next day and you'll start asking Mark to order this, order that and you want to put this thing together. 
But the golden rule in this game is not to copy. You can't just copy and replicate. That's boring. A lot of chefs do it in this country. Uh, it pisses me off in a big way because uh, there's, none of, there's none of themselves on that dish. And they are insecure chefs. And chefs that don't really believe in their own palate and follow their own feel. But they're cooked now. They've been in there for about one and a half minutes. The scallops are nice and sweet, suckling in the center. And the John Dory is beautifully caramelized on the outside. Just leave them to rest. I suppose for me, the most important part is being dangerous. Taking that step further and you know, continue to evolve, not sit, sitting back on laurels and taking things for granted. Because you know, I have a very loyal customer base here, which uh, they come and eat sometimes two or three times a week. And they don't want to see the same food that was on there five years ago. It's still developing, it's still working. We try to use uh, a lunch menu as our guinea pig. But even that's difficult because you know we're 25 pounds for three courses. So I can't st start sticking pigeon, duck, foie gras, uh, on the lunch menu, otherwise I'm going to go bust. It's quite risky um, changing a, what is already a winning formula. Well, it's a winning formula, but it's boring, isn't it? Because you see the same dish day in, day out, and... Um, a bit too much there, I don't want to overdo that. Um, and people's awareness are becoming a lot more fussy. Customers' demands are becoming a lot more harder than they ever were before. They want to know in great detail what's gone into that. They want to know exactly how that's cooked. They want to know how much fat is in that. And I have a very light style of cooking which revolves around a very little cream and very little butter, which is a very healthy way of eating. I like to think sometimes customers come here to eat, uh, take three courses without having to feel, you know, like some porker they can't move for three days after. So, I mean, in a sense, are you trying to brand the new restaurant with the menu? Um, well, I just want to put my hallmark on it, really. I've left the aubergine, and, and now we've moved on to a different level, and I want to evolve the cooking, take it a step higher, make my customers happy, um, and, you know, keep on turning the, the mind in the cooks over and over so they, you know, they become stimulated by what they're doing, so they feel excited, motivated, something new, something they can write about. So this is the John Doyle with roasted scallops, the marinated vegetables, Garnish with um, white beans and finish with a very, very light vinaigrette. Make it! Now that the inspections have started, Ramsay's on red alert for another Michelin visit. A booking for two with a French contact number has aroused suspicion. Very important vocal from France. And uh, when they made that phone call, they gave their contact telephone number, the head office in Michelin in France. So um, you don't have to be intelligent to realize that. It's an inspector who's calling. <laughs> this whole inspection get has to be through incognito. We're not supposed to know these guys are coming. But you know, I've sniffed them out, and I, I, I think and I'm 99% sure they're coming tonight so yeah it's all down to us really yeah what is the importance well, there's a great importance and it's what we wake up in the morning for it's what we get out of bed at 6 30 in the morning it's what we go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning for Absolutely. tom did you lay out the table for michelin oh, no, did you put the did you lay out the table for michelin there's a big hole on the tablecloth when there's one guy that sits in your dining room and it happens to be the michelin then Christ, you know about it in a big way. And that's why I'm so, you know, a little dubious, the fact that, you know, we've been looked at it now and it's scared me to think that we're under that kind of scrutinization. Two stars is a chef's award. It's a cook's award. You get two stars for cooking. You get three stars for being a cook stroke restaurateur. And now that's what Gordon's turning into. He inspects his cheese board. He takes an interest in the wine cellar. He looks at the flowers. He inspects the waiters. Three stars is all about the package. When they walk into Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, even though they may not see him, they should be able to smell him. This inspection means so much to Ramsay that for the first time he's banned the film crew from the kitchen and allowed only fixed cameras. To maintain the inspector's anonymity, Ramsay has also ruled the dining room out of bounds. 
such is Michelin's influence in the trade, it's reported that one French chef committed suicide after losing a star. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not Leonardo, it's him, uh, the president, yeah? Okay, with a lady, so, uh, yeah. Now it's time to, to f uh, go, yeah? Ramsay's hunch was right, but it's not just a couple of ordinary inspectors at table six. From a previous visit, Gordon's French waiters have recognised one of the guests as Michelin's president from Paris. Yeah, are we supposed to recognise? We're not supposed to know who he is. Uh, well, we can do a bit of both. We've got to be careful at table five and make sure everyone gets served the same. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. Okay. On serve two cappuccino muscal. D'accord. Ensuite, two pieds de cochon. The inspectors are getting two extra appetizers, but Gordon's covering all bases. The tables next to them are getting the same treatment. Okay, watch this table, yes. The president of Michelin, smash two muscal, table six. Two cappuccino, we'll see two small pigs trotter. Starters, one ravioli, one panda de morue. Main course, one palantine, one pigeon. Don't worry, Rustia. Cook two. Yeah, okay. Tim one's Rustia. Gordon can't resist phoning Marco Pierre White to gloat. I know it is. It is definitely him. John Claude Christophe, Thierry, they all recognise him. It's definitely him. Huh? Well, it's not over yet. I'm going to send the muscale. Okay, and I'm going to be pulled back. Huh? Oh, f***ing knows. I'm going to have to go now. <laughs> Shh. Come on, polish the plates. Polish the f***ing plates. Don't worry about that. 13 Good. raviolis, had a cart left. Yeah, don't do that, it's not the past, don't worry. Bags. With so much to play for, Polish Gordon's place, personally That's overseeing it. everything that goes to the inspector's table. Rusty, yes, come here, look. Mate, the beautiful pig's right, there's f***ing hair everywhere. So, look, on the pig's right, Rusty, there's a lot of hair everywhere. Huh? Do you make a beautiful pig's right, there's hair. They've got to be shringed. That's why... Do you mean? Huh? That's why we take them off, isn't it? Yes, sir. Service. <laughs> One minute from now, concentrate you. We just kind of or <laughs> up for everybody here. <laughs> One minute from now, two of early's in. You know who this is for? Yes, good. So wake up, what's that there? What's that for? I don't give a f about that, dickhead. Concentrate on keeping your job. Wait. Max, touch the shovel, please. Saucing Mark, sauce the ravioli, please. Don't let that <laughs> sauce it, Mark. Yeah. Please, yeah, Mark. That's, the kind of, that's how we get <laughs> Mark. We come this far, Mark. Yeah, and that <laughs> will ram it in our ring piece, yeah? I'm sorry, I'm the starters are about to go to table six, where the Michelin inspectors sit in judgment. Anxious about progress, Ramsey demands constant updates from his front of house staff. Do you think he, do you think he knows you know he's a Michelin? I don't know, but I, I try not to go to it always because I'm terrified. Four Ravelli. Musica go on table this. Okay, good. Uh, what, what are they speaking? What are they speaking to, together? English. Really? And did you recognise uh, Musica for table ten? There's two trees. Did you recognise him from last time? Oh yeah. yeah did he recognise you? No, I imagine how many times he's got to eat out. Does he look happy or is he miserable? It's important not to put the staff on edge because that will have a feel in the dining room. The rest of the staff will be on edge. They'll be slightly nervous. They'll be waiting for a mistake to happen. So um, you've got to control it and make your staff feel relaxed and composed uh, on dealing with such a big occasion. One balancing, one pigeon. Now, guys, you know who this is for, yeah? This place is disgusting. Come on, you. Let's go, you donkey. Right. Darren, have you got any fucking initiative, yeah? Henry, have you? Clean the fucking place, you dirty bastard. Double doos, the guy. Oh, come on, donkey. Who's that? Get a grip, you, huh? Yeah, are you in a daze, you? Are you in a daze? No, Fucking dreamer. Darren, you, you know, the most experienced person on the pass, hey, right. and you still stand there like a you know. Who do you actually, I mean, how good do you actually think you are, bottom line? What, how good do you actually think you are, bottom line, seriously? Do you Not think that, you're shit up? No, go on. The VIP's main courses are about to be dressed. Ballotine de poulet bresse and pigeon with choux farci. Okay. Get up. 
And where Kitchen is concerned, the ultimate is three Michelin stars. Becoming static as a two star and not winning it for five, six years would destroy me, I suppose, because I'm, I'm bursting with energy. I'd laser those truffles, there's no, there's no, uh, I don't see my spin anyway, guys. I suppose we would be the youngest yeah. at the age of 32 in Europe. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that would be history in the making. Go over the pigeon, Mark, just to heat it up again, please. And a nice, generous with the stock, Mark, yeah? Yeah, served in the soup, yeah, other way. Thanks. Service? Yes, sir. Okay, Mark, good, very good. Go, on the left. Go, quickly go. Do smart. Fucking it, right, Rusty, wrap them in the slim film, just keep them there. I don't even want to look at it, you know that. Ooh, fuck me. Bit too much for me, that. Ah, fuck. Not, not, not every time we get them president of fucking France in, you know that. I'm a little bit further down the road to Gordon. I've won my three mission stars. Gordon's knocking on the door to win three. Gordon, when Gordon wins his three stars in the Michelin, then that will be a major changing point within his life. To win three stars, you have to play an attacking game. To retain three stars, you play a defending game. On, Dave. The Michelin's dishes have been dispatched safely, but there's a delay on the vegetables for some other diners. Having simmered in tension all evening, Gordon Ramsay finally explodes. What is going on here, you? What is going on? One Ravelli, one fucking Fargo. Hey, you. Arsehole, you lost it again. You lost it again. What's your big deal? Why don't you fuck off home then? Go on, fuck off home then. Hey, arsehole. Why don't you fuck off home then? Why don't you fuck off home? Why are you fing up? Have you lost it? No, Gordon. Well, fing wake up, dickhead. Yes, Gordon. What's the big deal? What about anyone fing so do far? Do you want to go home and cry to mummy again? No, like a big fing wuss? No, Gordon. Guy puts himself in the shit fing the kitchen, stands there bubbling like a fing baby. You got any bite back as a guy? You got any bollocks, you? Yes, go on. Have you f***? As far as I'm concerned, they're you asshole. Back in, Simon. What's he doing, Mark? Four fucking bass, one study fargra, one ravioli, and he hadn't got the fucking ondive on. What's going on in your mind, you? What's going on in your mind? What is it then? Can't keep up? Tell me then. I'm not sure. Really. Your mind back in the f***ing beach again, is it? No, go on. Unbelievable. Wake up. Or next time, don't even set the alarm clock. Stay in your f***ing piss. Where you going? Do you mind stop, stop knocking me like a fucking punch bag? Do you understand? Because I'm going to lash out. Do you understand? Ramsay's attempt at relaxing the staff isn't working. Henry, Owen's partner on the garnish, has overcooked the artichokes and held up another table. And you see, you, you, yeah, come on the pass a minute, on the pass. You send me six fucking main courses like that again, and I, I'll, I'll grab you by the fucking scruff of the neck and I'll throw you on the street, you understand? Because you're not just fucking up a table of two there. We're sending six main courses, you So I had all the lamb back and all the fucking pigeon back for you, why? Can you cook an artichoke? Yes, Gordon. Yeah, can you cook an artichoke? Yes, How old are you? 24, Gordon. 24, and you can't cook an artichoke? Yes, Gordon. You, you can cook it? Yes, Gordon. Like what? Like a Because this is a fucking laughing stop. This is a, this is a dream. This is a fucking, this is a piss take. Yes, Get with it, yes, dickhead. Yes, when Gordon worked for me, he realised that the standards were the most important. And he's, Gordon has adopted that. And in his kitchen, if you see, as you must have done many times, stood in his kitchen and watched him conduct a service, he doesn't let anything go which doesn't meet the standard which is required. Gordon has a duty to his clients to deliver a standard. People walk through those doors wanting dreams to come true, and that's what it's all about. Come on, Nate, please. Backs. The inspector's desserts get Ramsay's personal seal of approval. 
go. Ouvre les portes là. Ouvre les portes là. Christophe, s'il vous plaît. Ah, uh, just uh, you. Come here a minute. Come here, come here, and you as well. Hey, come here. I've just filled out a uh, man. I've just filled out a form to get these salaries, these bank in the sand. Do you know what I've made, put this one down as? This guy's a chef de party. Yeah. Do you know what he is? He's a chef de party as well. You are from now on a commie, and you are a fucking commie. Don't like that? Give me a notice and fuck off. Commie, commie. Now fuck off. Yeah, and young man, you can't stand the salary, not enough money. Do you know what you can do? Write your fucking notice and right off with pleasure. When I turn on some. I wash my f***ing hands clean. OK, Commie? Where are you going? Feel happy now? Less stressed? Want a little cry? No, go on. Chef to party? Ma. Ma. Chef to party? Ah, uh, chef to party. Do you want the paper? I, I, I don't give a f*** if you go, you know that? I'll never miss dickheads. You know that? Never, ever, ever, ever. I suppose that was probably the toughest ever dinner I'll possibly cook, I suppose. Um, that was supposed to be the president of the Michelin guys. Um, uh, fine, it's very clever, they use false names, and that's what we like about them, because they're completely incognito, but John Claude recognised them from two years ago, which is important. Yeah. The whole 47 covers tonight was the total uh, dream. Everything went to perfection. Um, Owen fucked up the artichokes and overcooked them. So we threw them in the bin and threatened him to, to kick him out if he'd done that again. Um, and, you know, it all filtered through my hands. It was perfect. Great timing. That was the important part. Everything was well staggered. Seven lock tables, eight lock tables, and they're all beautifully timed. 15 covers an hour. Brilliant. Tonight went well. Tonight went very well. So you basically you've done all you can do. Oh, I can't do any more now. We've we've hit maximum. We've uh, we pushed the boat out. We got looked after like everybody else this evening. And uh, it was nice to see him back here again, first time. And obviously last time I cooked him was two and a half years ago, when he confirmed that I won my second mission of stars. So you know, this guy's serious. And um, if there's one that seriously puts you on your tiptoes, it's him. The drama and tension behind him, Ramsey now has an agonizing three-month wait before the new Michelin Guide is published and the prospect of realizing a lifelong dream. They put me to the test in a big way, and uh, let's wait and see in three months' time. Well, we, we talked about this before, and we talked about this yeah, but just Roy, before. There's no need to like a fucking woman over there. No. Next week, Ramsay heads for Paris and a huge culinary challenge. He's running a team of 30 chefs and cooking for more than 600 guests at a World Cup banquet. But as ever, there can only be one boss. Well, if he's got a concern, he's got to speak his fucking concern. He can't just keep it a bottle up inside. I'm glad to be playing!